how new technology will change the mechanics of government services in plainish English. Gosh, that was hard to say. Never mind, I'll get on. Here are some citizens. You, me, your auntie Martha, my cousin Bryony from Guildford, her granddad, that bloke down the chip shop with a silly hat, Steve. All of us use government services. Nowadays, all of these services use some IT, information technology. Eventually, they'll become digital, and then they'll use loads of IT. They're delivered by government organisations using mostly bespoke technology provided by big suppliers through long-term contracts. Much of it is expensive, hard to change, and often not that good. Ooh, says Cousin Bryony. However, new technology services delivered over the internet can change this. Some people call this cloud. Inside, government services look like this. A collection of standalone services, driving licences, benefits, tax, passports, pensions, and so on. Here's one of those services. We'll chop it into bits. Each bit is a mix of people, process, and technology. At the top, levers and dials. This is the bit of the service we interact with. Paper forms, telephone calls, and increasingly, websites and mobile apps. At the bottom, machinery, the fundamentals, printing presses, the post, mainframe computers, and nowadays, sophisticated IT services, databases, network storage, kit and caboodle. In the middle, all sorts of stuff. For now, let's just call it gubbins. There are two sorts of gubbins. Specific gubbins, the bits of the service that are unique, like calculating text or printing passports. Common gubbins, the bits of the service that have stuff in common with other services, like checking identity or collecting money. Now, here comes the crafty part. As services become digital, new technology allows us to untangle the bits, change them without affecting other bits, and even buy them separately from different suppliers. In the case of common gummits, it will be possible to untangle things even more. And we could go through the services, untangling stuff, making each component better, cheaper and faster. That's brilliant, says Auntie Martha, but there's more. It will be possible to use the same components across many services. By using the same levers and dials, it will make it much easier for us to engage with government. The new gov.uk website is a great example of how this is starting. Or, by using the same machinery, we can save money through rationalisation and scale economies. This is an important part of the government's G Cloud initiative. Or, by using the same common gubbins, we can focus, do things better and save even more money. The new identity assurance framework is an example here. Maybe, within a few years, we will have moved from this to this. So what about suppliers? asks Bryony's granddad. This part is really important. Right now, most government IT services are supplied by a few, very large, suppliers. In the new world, when things look like this, there will be a need for a rainbow of different types of services provided by both big and small suppliers. Steve is keen to know, why is this good? A common set of levers and dials will make it simpler for citizens to interact with government. A change to the levers and dials could be made across the board. Specific gubbins can be changed from, say, pink to blue, quickly, easily and cheaply. Common gubbins avoids wheel reinvention. One solution can be used by all. Common gubbins can also be changed, like replacing these two services with one without affecting other services. Easy switching of commodity machinery will create a fluid market and reduce cost. Blimey, that's amazing, says Steve. And it is amazing. This new approach is likely to make a huge difference to the effectiveness of government over the next few years. Right, that's it. Time to get my chips.